High House Chapel was built in 1760 and was about the 40th Methodist chapel in the country. Wesley's evangelist preachers had brought Methodism to Westgate in 1748. But it was under the thorn trees near to the ford in Isaacburn that John Wesley chose to preach his first sermon on May the 26th, 1752. As well as attending the Anglican Church at St John's Chapel every Sunday, the small society were meeting in each other's homes to strengthen their resolve to lead a holy life. By 1760, their number had grown to 35 members and no house was big enough to accommodate their meetings. A plot of land was purchased from John Emerson at Westerhots for five pounds and their first chapel was built in order and for the sole purpose of the Christian society commonly called Methodists to erect and build a meeting house for divine worship. Divine worship for the early Methodist societies consisted of class and band meetings where they shared their religious frailties in group confession, studied and read the gospel, prayed and sang. The purpose of the meetings was to strengthen each other's convictions to lead a holy life. Holy Communion could only be given by a priest and received at the church in St John's Chapel. The building would have been plain, with no ornamentation, imagery, stained glass, altar or communion rail. Apart from a raised pulpit, from which preachers could dispense the word from the Bible, other furniture probably consisted solely of wooden forms. With a membership of only 35, it would be considerably smaller than today's building, and a previous roof line can be seen on the west gable end. As the only Methodist chapel in the Dale at the time, it was simply called Weirdale. Wesley visited Weirdale 13 times altogether, sometimes preaching abroad beside the hawthorn tree or inside if the weather was inclement. By the time of his death in 1791, the chapel had around 200 members and the building must have been changed to accommodate them. The Methodists had remained as a society within the Church of England until they separated in 1795 in order to conduct their own Holy Communion services. With new chapels being built at Westgate and Stanhope, the Isaacburn Chapel became known as High House. A communion rail must have been introduced into the chapel and soon afterwards in 1804 a manse was built onto the chapel at the western gable end to house a minister who resided there for between one to three years. What we see today is the final stage of building at High House, which was made in 1872 at the climax of the lead mining industry, just before its collapse at the end of that decade. Growing congregations required larger buildings, and in most cases this meant building another chapel on a new site. In the 1860-70 to 70 period, new chapels were being erected in many of the Weirdale villages. At High House, the trustees decided in 1871 to enlarge the chapel. There are few details of what existed before the alterations, but the decision was made to raise the height of the building by six feet, to extend the building at the east end and make internal changes to the structure. The eastern extension was modelled to create a Victorian Gothic-style church entrance, providing space for a vestibule where members could be welcomed on entry by the chapel steward, thanked on exit by the minister, given a hymn book and where church notices could be placed. At the west end of the chapel, an internal wall was constructed to create a vestry for the minister and a more private entrance for church officials, the organist and the minister. The wall also served to support the gallery. An Act of Parliament clock dated circa 1797 is hung on the west wall, indicating a time when chapels were one of the few places exempt from the Duties on Clocks and Watches Act. This was where poorer people could go to tell the time. 
The most prominent feature of the worshipping area is the enormous high pulpit, seating up to six people. This provides the preacher with an overpowering view of his congregation, both in the gallery and downstairs, reminding us that Methodist chapels were built as preaching houses for hearing the word of God. Below the pulpit is a simple railed-off area, where members kneel to receive Holy Communion from the appointed minister. Before 1795, Methodists were instructed to travel to their local church to receive Holy Communion from the ordained priest. And while separation from the Anglican Church meant that Methodists could conduct their own Eucharist services, this area has never been the focus of Methodist church architecture. The two areas either side of the pulpit once housed large coke boilers, which provided heating for the building. Today, the building is heated with infrared wall heaters. There is seating downstairs on pine pews for approximately 100 people. Two sets of pews were removed in the 1990s to provide more performing space at the front of the chapel. Prior to the creation of the vestry in 1872, the capacity would be considerably larger, including standing space. There are signs that at one time these pews had hinged doors for the renting of pews. A visitor wrote of a gallery in High House Chapel in 1859, though this was probably replaced as part of the 1872 alterations. It's supported at each end by the interior walls of the vestibule and the vestry, and by cast iron pillars beautifully decorated to resemble marble. The gallery is reached from two sets of stairs at each side of the vestibule, and a private set of stairs for the organist. The upstairs pews are tiered to provide a good view of the visiting preacher and his pulpit, and some of the front-facing pews are boxed for pew rents. At the west end of the gallery, behind the pulpit, is the space where the choir and a small band of stringed and woodwind instruments would perform. The centre of this space is now occupied by the magnificent Vincent Pipe Organ, which was purchased in 1884. The gallery provides fine views through the plain glass windows of the meadows and pastures outside. <laughs>